Discover the exquisite beauty of Islam with our exclusive poster collection showcasing the 99 names of Allah. Each poster meticulously presents the Arabic name, pronunciation and English translation, embodying the essence of our Creator. Elevate your surroundings with these high-quality designs that not only serve as art, but also offer a glimpse into the profound beauty of Islamic culture. Immerse yourself in the collection and unveil the magnificence of the 99 names. Links in the description box. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you knew, my name is Bobby. Guys, wow, another Christian comes up with something that we've never heard before. Today we're going to check out Big Nick with his video, shocking proof that Islam was created by Satan. Okay, Big Nick, shower us with your wisdom. I cannot wait. Guys, before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, so excited for this. Let's have a look. Islam is here to stay, it's not going anywhere, and it is rapidly increasing. Hey, at least he spoke the truth there. It's the only religion that was ever created to deny the fact that Jesus is God. Many Muslims make the what? claim that the could What did I expect? Of course he couldn't keep up the truth longer than five seconds. It is the only religion that denies Jesus Christ to be God. This is absolutely ridiculous, of course, because Judaism not only denies that Jesus Christ is God, supposedly, but denies him as the Messiah, denies him as a prophet, as well. And if you scroll back a little bit further, Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, etc., they all deny, of course, that Jesus Christ supposedly is God. It is essentially just Christianity, Trinitarian Christianity, that claims that Jesus Christ is God, nobody else. Many Muslims make the claim that the Quran is the written word of God, meanwhile the Bible is somehow corrupted and not the word of God. But once we read the Quran together, okay. you're gonna- Those statements are so null and void, man. Yeah, every single religion claims that their book is the word of God. The Christians claim that their book is the word of God. The Jews claim that the Torah is the word of God and the New Testament is not. The Muslims claim that the Quran is the word of God. The Sikhis claim that their revelation is revealed by God, etc., etc., you name it. Why is it always an attack on Islam? As if those claims are exclusive to Islam. We know why. I realize that this is no written word from God, but actually the written words of Lucifer himself. What's going on, guys? It's Big Nick back for another video. Yeah, Thank you guys on, so Big much Nick. for coming back to the channel today. Before we get into today's video, if you guys like Christian content, please give this video a like. Subscribe to my channel down below if you are new and okay. turn on my post notifications. I actually like Christian content if it is sincere and honest. I can listen to certain Orthodox priests speak, for example, on political issues, and I might even resonate with that. However, this here is not Christian content, this is simply apologists content, and therefore we hear the same rhetoric over and over again. It has been all said already by people such as David Wood and the likes. This is not Christian content, this is simply anti-Islam content. So you never miss a new video. Without further ado, let's get into it. Did you know let's that the Quran make proves make that Islam was written by Satan? When Muhammad received revelation to write the Quran, he claimed that he was visited by angels Angel Gabriel when he yeah. went to a cave to worship Allah. The great miracle of Islam is that although Muhammad was illiterate and couldn't read or write, his mm -hmm. writings were of divine nature because this supposed angel helped him write it. However, in Sahih al-Bukhari 3, uh, we learn that this okay. angel- So which one is it? In the Quran or in the Hadith? Because you're quoting Hadith, but you're attributing it to the Quran. You say this is found within the Quran, but it is clearly not because you yourself are quoting the Hadith. So if you're speaking about certain proof that you want to to find to further your argument, apparently you're not finding it in the Quran and therefore you're debunking yourself by claiming that the Quran therefore must be written by Satan. Moreover, you cannot even formulate a proper sentence because as you just said, Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was illiterate, but then later on you claim those are his writings. No, they're not his writings because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam 
was not writing down anything, he was receiving revelation. So pin Muhammad to the ground three times in a row to the point where Muhammad felt physical pain to where his body couldn't bear it anymore. And he ended up being forced to write what this angel told him to. Let's read it together and you tell me- Yet again, you, so you have absolutely no basic knowledge of Islam, but somehow you feel entitled to make a video. The question truly is here, of course, who is guided by God and who is guided by the devil? What gives you the permission? What gives you the motivation? even to speak on the subject matter. Yet again, Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, did not write down anything by himself. Moreover, you mentioned he's been pinned down forcefully. Even if that were so, what is the issue with that? How is that falsifying Islam? Because Prophet Muhammad was receiving revelation which was shattering to him physically. Somehow this is supposed to be an argument against Islam? It makes no sense whatsoever. Let's read it together and you tell me if you think that this is the nature of what a holy angel would do to a human being. What does it matter what your audience thinks? This is just subjective. You ask many people, you will get many opinions, of course. Many people hold very, very different beliefs within this day and age especially. Who tells you that it is the truth? You cannot make a truth claim based upon the emotions of your audience. Hey guys, don't you think this does not sound like an angel? Huh? Again, who cares what they think? Who cares what they emotionally believe? It boils down to if the source can be trusted. The divine inspiration to Allah's messenger was in the form of good dreams which came true like bright daylight. And then the love of seclusion was bestowed upon him. He used to go in seclusion in the cave of Hira where he used to worship Allah alone continuously for many days before his desire yeah. to see his family. He used to take with him the journey food for the stay and then come back to his wife Khadijah to take his food likewise again till suddenly the truth descended upon him while he was in the cave of Hira. The angel came to him and asked him to read. The prophet replied, I do not know how to read. The prophet added, the angel caught me forcefully and pressed me so hard that I could not bear it anymore. He then released me and again asked me and? to read and I replied, I do not know how to read. Thereupon he caught me again and pressed me a second time till I could not bear oh, it anymore. He, he then released me, me and again because asked me to like read but man. again I replied, I do not me. know how to read Patrick. or what shall I read. Thereupon he caught me for the third time and pressed me and then released me and said, read in the name of your Lord who has created all that exists created man from a clot read and your lord is the most generous so we see here in the hadiths that this angel pinned muhammad and? to the ground and bullied him into submission until he wrote what the oh angel commanded oh my gosh him okay this encounter let's play this game all right guys let's use the same disingenuous tactics here after all we actually gonna look into your bible we're not looking into secondary material you looked into the hadith you did not look into the quran so now we're gonna look into your bible into samuel 15 3 this is the king james version and we read now go and smite amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not but slay both men and women infant and suckling ox and sheep camel and ass so now let me commit the same appeal to emotion fallacy hey guys when you read this can this truly come from god i think that this comes from the devil himself how can god command the killing of babies the killing of ox and sheep the killing of everybody how can god declare this this is clearly the devil don't you see guys this is the level of argumentation that christian apologists use it is nothing but an appeal to emotion fallacy as i already said However, if we really look into the text and we rationally observe the text, we are speaking on the one hand of God commanding his people to kill babies. And on the other hand, we are speaking about an angel appearing with revelation and pressing Muhammad wasalam, to the ground. I let you decide what is more evil and what comes from Satan. Muhammad, that he was receiving revelation from God and that he was a prophet of God. However, when we examine the violent and cruel nature of this angel, we can clearly see that this was a fallen angel and not an angel from the heavens above. Clearly. This fallen angel Absolutely. traumatized- There are further Christian projection here, of course. It must be a fallen angel after all. You simply do not know the basics of the Islamic doctrine. Within Islam, we don't have fallen angels because fallen Fallen angels would essentially go against the wisdom of God because God would create an angel and that angel then later would become evil. No, God creates everything in his infinite wisdom and therefore God creates angels as his servants. The angels follow Allah's, follow God's will. There are no fallen angels within Islam, but of course you do not know that. There are angels and then there are jinns. 
But be that as it may, he does not list any proof for his statement whatsoever. He simply says, well, by reading the text, we clearly see this must be a fallen angel. Yeah, says who? Based upon what? Based upon your own subjective moral standard of how revelation should be received? This is absolutely laughable, of course. And yet again, let me refer you back to your Bible. And please, just by reading your own text, explain to me how can this then come from an all-loving God. Muhammad in such a severe way that the rest of the Hadith severe. explains that he was afraid something bad was going to happen to him when he returned home to his wife Khadija. Let's read the rest of it together. Then Allah's messenger returned with the inspiration and with his heart beating severely. Then he went to Khadija and said, yeah. cover me, cover me. They covered him till his fear was over and after that he told her everything that had happened and said, I fear that something may happen to me. Khadija replied, never, but Allah, Allah will never disgrace you. You keep good relations with your kith and kin help the poor and the destitute serve your guests generously and assist exactly. the deserving calamity afflicted ones so there you see that really boils down to subjectivism and especially it boils down to of course how you want to read the text if you're really sincere or not this text is absolutely beautiful because Muhammad وسلم, receives revelation but yes he's in a state of fear he does not know how to handle it after all, it is an angel that has appeared to him. I would really like to see Big Nick's reaction to the angel Gabriel. But after all, he goes to Khadija, his loving wife, and she is comforting him. Ultimately, we see the relationship between Muhammad and Khadija. We see the beautiful, loving marriage that they had. For us Muslims, this is an absolutely beautiful text about the marriage of those two. The demonic encounter that Muhammad had, which he thought the was demonic the angel wife. Gabriel, is what sparked the idea that Islam is the true revelation from God. However, yeah, the angel okay. I have to cut this off a billion times, not only because we heard all of those statements, arguments, quote unquote, before a billion times, but if you really look into it, what do you say? You say that a demonic angel appeared because he pressed Muhammad? Ask yourself what the revelation was. The revelation was to worship one God alone. So now you tell me how this is demonic. Usually when people summon demons, those demons tell those people to worship those demons. You see that with people such as Alistair Crowley. They wrote lengthy works upon certain demons. They even named them by name and how to worship those entities. You look into polytheistic religions, such as Hinduism, and you see how Hindus worship different deities. They are being told by deities to worship them. However, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, goes into the cave and comes out with the message of worshipping God, the creator of the universe, alone and nobody else. Absolutely demonic. Gabriel recorded so in the Bible is not an angel that used violent force, but rather an angel that spoke positive and comforting words to the Virgin Mary, letting her know that she is favored by God and telling her to not be afraid. When Mary received the revelation from the angel okay. Gabriel... Okay, yet again, there's not an argument whatsoever. Now you're appealing to your own scripture. First and foremost, we have to establish if your scripture is a trustable source, which it is not. Even Christian scholars will admit that the Bible has been corrupted. So this is the first point that we need to clarify. We cannot trust your scripture. Therefore, anything that is found within that scripture is not of authority. But moreover, let's give you the benefit of the doubt and let's say, yes, it is true what is written in the Bible. Angel Gabriel appeared to Mary and he was speaking comforting words. How does that disqualify now Angel Gabriel appearing to Prophet Muhammad? Prophet Muhammad and Mary are two different people. Two different people, two different approaches. Why wouldn't the angel talk differently to a woman than he's talking to a man? Give me an actual argument and not your emotional opinion. Angel Gabriel in Luke 126-35, we notice a total opposite demeanor. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary and he came to her and said greetings O favored one the Lord is with you but she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be the angel said to her do not be oh, afraid she Mary, was for you have found favor with God and behold you will conceive in your womb and bear a son oh, you shall call his name dude even with your own scripture congratulations you just debunked yourself as you just read and the angel said to her do 
not be afraid, Mary. So wait a second, you're telling me the initial reaction to Angel Gabriel by Mary was fear? She was afraid? And then Angel Gabriel told her to not be afraid? Wow, very strange. Mary was afraid just like Mohammed was afraid. Man, you're doing my work for me. He will Pathetic. be great and he will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give him the throne you of his father yourself, David. Bro. And he will it's reign done. over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the most high will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called holy, the son of God. Well, would you look at that? Instead of pinning Mary to the ground and demanding that she accepts revelation from God by forceful physical submission, the angel Gabriel visits Mary, oh uplifts her, as well as comforting her by letting her know yeah. not to be afraid oh. of the supernatural. Yeah, and the main difference here that you are not mentioning, and honestly, at this point, I don't think that you have malicious intent. I don't think that you have some evil intent. I simply believe that you're too low IQ to see this. Mother Mary did not receive revelation. Angel Gabriel appeared to her and told her about her virgin birth. That's it. She did not receive revelation because she is not a prophet. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, received revelation. He was receiving the whole Quran. Do you understand this? Those are the differences. Therefore, the approach will be different as well. However, what they both have in common is when they saw the angel, they both were afraid. This is a commonality. What sounds more wow. like an angel to you? Violence or peace? Now, back in the Hadith, yeah, we see that okay. the what Gabriel, does sound that more like God to you? Depict, Violence or peace? Uh, and overpowers uh, 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 uh. This type of behavior proves that this was a satanic fallen angel because the Bible shows us in Acts 19, Proof. 13 through 16 that a demon operating through. All right, and this is it for today's video. I'm going to cut it off here. If you, for whatever reason, want to watch the whole video of Big Nick, then head over to his channel and check out the video Shocking Proof that Islam was created by Satan. Please, if you head over there into his comment section, be civil, be nice. I genuinely mean this from the bottom of my heart. Big Nick, may Allah guide you to the truth. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box to further support my work. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. Ya nafsu illam tadfari la tajzai Ah